Okay, I want to look at this particular question, which is taken from a mechanics one paper, that is paper four. Here we've got a particle of mass 20 kilograms on a rough plane, which is inclined at an angle of 60 degrees. Equilibrium is maintained by a force of magnitude P newtons, which is in a direction parallel to a line of greatest slope of the plane. Now we'll return to that idea later. The greatest possible value of P is twice the least possible value of P. We want to find the value of the coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane. Now, as is always the case with these questions, we want to start by drawing a nice big clear diagram. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So here is our slope, like that, okay? And uh, here's going to be our particle, okay, like that. And the angle theta here is equal to 60 degrees. And we should draw on our forces. Well, as always, we're going to have a weight force which acts vertically down, and we're going to have a normal reaction force that acts perpendicular to the plane. And the reason for that is the word normal means perpendicular. So there we go. We've got normal reaction force there, got a weight force there, which is mg. Now, um, what about p? Well, we're told that p acts in a direction parallel to a line of greatest slope of the plane. And for the time being, I'm going to assume that that direction is plane, right, in the direction of the, the greatest slope. Now, that is an assumption, and uh, we're going to return to that a little bit later, because it's not necessarily a valid assumption, actually, but that's the way I read the question at the moment. Okay, then. Um, what about friction? Now, there are, there are really two cases to be considered here, right? And um, in order to understand it, we've got to really understand one core thing about friction, which is this. It's often misunderstood. Friction opposes motion. Okay, so friction opposes motion. Friction does not oppose force, it always opposes motion. So actually the friction can be in the same direction as P, or it could be in the opposite direction as P, because it doesn't oppose P, it doesn't oppose the force, it opposes the direction of travel. So what that means is we've actually got two cases in this question. The first case is that the object is just about to slide down the plane. Right? If the object is about to slide down the plane, then friction is going to be acting up. Right? So there's one case where friction acts up. Okay, now if you think about that then, what that means is that the force P is kind of just sufficient that it is helping the friction uh, in keeping the object from sliding down. That means that P is actually going to be a lower value, right? Because um, it's being assisted by the friction. Now for the second case, what we've got is we've got the contrary, right? Imagine that we increase P, we keep increasing, it keeps getting bigger, keeps getting bigger. Then what's going to happen is the object, instead of falling down the slope, is actually going to be at the point where it's going to be sliding up the slope, right? P is going to begin to drag it up. And if that's the case, if the object is going to move up the plane, then friction will be acting down. Okay, so friction will act down. And in that case, what does that mean? Well, it means that P um, is, um, has to be the bigger value, right, the upper value, because it's not only now opposing the weight component down the plane, but it's also opposing the friction acting down the plane as well. Right, so the, the case number one it's going to give us the lower value of P. In case number two, it's going to give us the upper value of P. So let's now try to resolve our forces. Well, I think, first of all, uh, we want to uh, start talking about the components uh, parallel and perpendicular. So uh, here, for the weight, we've got a component that is parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. And the size of this will be mg sine theta and mg cos theta, right? Because remember that this angle here, that angle, is going to be the same as this angle here, okay? Now that means that we can start to resolve perpendicular. So we will do that. Perpendicular to the plane. We know that we have got equilibrium. And so that means that r will be equal to mg cos theta, okay? And uh, because we found out the normal reaction force, we're also able to find out the limiting value of friction, right? The limiting value of friction is going to be equal to mu times by R. In other words, mu times by mg cos theta. Now, again, just a little bit of a note on friction, right? 
Uh, friction is not equal to mu r. This is often a common mistake that students make, right? Friction is not equal to mu r. Um, the limiting value of friction is equal to mu r. What that means is friction can take any value up to and including mu r, but um, uh, it, it is it is not necessarily equal to mu r, right? It can be can it be any value less? All right. Now that we've done that, let's uh, consider the two cases. We're going to consider the first case, case one, where uh, friction is acting up. What that means is that uh, the object is about to slide down the plane. Now, if that's the case, then what we've got here is that the P force uh, combined with the friction force is going to be equal to the component of the weight down the plane, right? So in other words, the, the weight acting down the plane is going to be balanced by the force P and also the force F. So let's rewrite that. We can say that the component of the weight down the plane, mg sine theta, has got to be equal to the force P plus the limiting value of friction. Okay, and we can rearrange that and say that P will be equal to the mg sine theta minus the limiting value of friction, and we know the limiting value of friction is mu mg cos theta. Okay, because it's, uh, it's the same as that thing there. All right then, then we consider the cons this can consider the second case, which is where friction is acting down the plane. So friction is acting down. And uh, if we just think about that for a second, if we go back to our diagram, if friction acts down, then the P force acting up the plane will be balancing the weight going down and now the friction going down, right? So P will be equal to the weight down and the friction down. So let's write that. Okay, here we go. So P must be equal to the mg sine theta plus the friction, which is mu mg cos theta. Now just notice actually how similar these two things are, right? So this is the lower bound for P, which is the component of the weight minus this friction. And then this is the upper value for P, which is the component of the weight, but plus the friction. And uh, one of the reasons I've kept all the letters, by the way, right, I've used uh, M and mu and G and theta is to illustrate to you, actually, all of these questions are basically the same format. You're always going to end up with something like this. The only thing that really changes is the numbers, right? So I've, I've taken the numbers out to make that clearer. All right. Then. Um, now, the question tells us that the upper value of P is equal to twice the lower value. So we can now write this out actually in full. We can say that mg sine theta plus mu mg cos theta has got to be equal to 2 times by mg sine theta minus mu mg cos theta. Okay, and uh, we can now cancel off, right? So we can cancel off the m and the g. So I'm going to do that. So m cancels off, m cancels off, m cancels off, m cancels off. G cancels, G cancels, G and G, okay? And so what we're gonna be left with is sine theta plus mu cos theta is equal to two sine theta minus two mu, two mu cos theta. Now is the time where we can substitute in our value for theta. Uh, so theta, remember, is 60 degrees, and sine uh, 60 degrees is root 3 upon 2, and cos 60 degrees is a half. So we're going to substitute that into here. So we're going to get root 3 upon 2 plus mu times by a half is equal to 2 times by root 3 upon 2 minus 2 mu times by a half. And uh, I think we can, again, we can cancel off a fair bit, can't we? The two there cancels with that two, that two cancels with that two. And I think as well, just to eliminate the twos on the left-hand side, I'm gonna multiply the whole equation through by two. So here on the left-hand side, we're gonna get root three plus mu is equal to two root three minus two mu. And so if I rearrange, I'm gonna get three mu on the left-hand side is equal to root three on the right-hand side which means that mu would be equal to root three upon three. 
Okay, and if you read the Mark scheme, that is uh, the answer that it gives. Okay, that mu is equal to root three upon three. However, returning back to the assumption I made at the beginning, I assume that P acted up the plane. And I think probably when the examiners wrote this question, that's kind of the assumption that, that, that they were making or that they hoped that we would make. Um, but actually, it doesn't say specifically that P has to act up the plane. Right there, there is an alternative reading, which is, which is valid, which says that P could be acting down the plane. So let's just consider that case. Now, obviously, if P is acting down the plane, then um, we're not going to be in the situation where the object is going to be pulled up, right? So that can't be the case. However, we could conceivably have the situation where um, the friction is so strong that you need a little bit of force P acting down the plane in order to start the object um, from to, to move down, right? So in other words, in this situation, friction is acting up like that. Right, obviously, and P is acting down, and P is kind of helping uh, the component of the weight down the plane to overcome the friction so that this object can slide down. Right now, in, in that case, uh, what we're going to write is that uh, the force P will be equal to, uh, sorry, the force P plus mg sine theta will be equal to F. So I'm going to go down and write that down. So we've got an alternative. So alternative, which is that the force P plus the component of the weight, the mg sine theta, will be equal to the limiting value of friction. And uh, we can rewrite that as uh, P is equal to the limiting value of friction, which was mu mg cosine theta minus uh, mg sine theta. Okay. And uh, this is going to be our lower bound again for the for the uh, for the for the value of p. But in this particular case, we can say that the upper bound, right, which was this thing, mg sine theta plus mu mg cos theta, will be equal to twice this thing here. Right. So we're going to consider that alternative now. So we've got mg sine theta plus mu mg cos theta is equal to twice this thing here, that thing, which is mu mg cos theta minus mg sine theta. Okay, and again we can cancel off all the mu's, uh, all the uh, m's and the g's, so gone, 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 gone. By the way, guys, I actually strongly encourage you to use letters instead of numbers because it'll just really help you cancel off stuff. And also it means that you can track your errors quite easily. Uh, now I'm going to introduce the values again. So sine theta uh, is equal to root three upon two plus mu uh, times by a half is equal to two mu times by a half minus uh, sine theta, which is root three upon two. Okay, and we can expand this one out on the right hand side, which is going to give us mu minus root three is equal to root three upon two plus mu upon two. Again, I'm going to multiply both sides by two to get rid of the fractions. I'm going to end up with uh, root three plus mu is equal to two mu minus two root three. If I rearrange that, I'm going to get that mu is equal to three root three. And if you read the Mark scheme, that is the second alternative answer. So um, I think what's happened here is the way they've written the question is ambiguous. So I suspect what's happened is when they got back the exam papers from the students, they realized that actually there were some alternative answers that were valid based upon the reading of the question. So if you read it strictly, it doesn't really indicate which direction P is in. Right, it just says it's in a direction parallel to a line of greatest slope. So if that's the case, then P can act up the plane or down the plane. Now, usually with questions of this type, it's, it's clear and it's necessary that P is up the plane. Uh, but in this question, they haven't excluded that as a possibility. And therefore, actually, students are quite right to consider the option where P acts down the plane as well. So what you've got on the mark scheme 
is not only have you got two alternative solutions, that is uh, two different ways of arriving at the same result, you've got two entirely different results. Right? You've got this result here, is that, and you've got this result here, which is that. Okay, so um, I hope that explains the question um, and I uh, hope that this was a helpful exercise for you. See you next time.